Okay, it's time to talk about how even sourcing is actually implemented in in this code base here. So we have an order aggregate. Uh, it has certain exceptions. We are using exceptions for control flow here. Doesn't have to be this way. It's just a detail. Uh, I want to focus not on the business logic here, but but more on the infrastructure required for or the the pattern required for being able to build the objects from events and being able to change the object first before we are publishing new events. So an aggregate, a typical aggregate implementation, it's not the only way, it's just one way of implementing the aggregate pattern. Um, there are also other ways which we will show, but this is probably the most popular one so that you will see examples like that often. It is, uh, there is a public method uh, uh, which is kind of like just the decision making process like can we do that and if we can then we decide okay we publish the event but obviously we also need somehow to manipulate the state so if we are submitting we'll be changing the state to submit it you see there it's not there directly and this is the one and only thing to learn about this kind of implementation of the aggregate pattern that the what used to be two things, well, what used to be one thing usually in this kind of objects, now is becoming two things: is the decision-making process and changing the state. The reason we are why we are um, splitting this in our methods is because when we we want to have a way of replaying state from the events without checking the logic again. You see the point? We don't when we are even sourcing, we are building from the events when we are replaying the the the, the system. The, the objects or the aggregate, we don't want those checks to happen again. We just want to set the state. And thanks to the fact that we have like extracted setting the state, we can reuse it, it reuse it from and be, so that it's called both from the place where we have just accepted the event and from the place where we are just building the, the objects from events. So apply order submitted uh, ends up in this piece of code. There's a very simple uh, DSL with the on class method. Basically, we take the, it's almost like a pattern magic, but in Ruby, not really a pattern magic. Uh, it's a, so we say on order submitted, we know it's an event, set the state, the customer ID set to event data customer ID, the number to event data order number, and set the state of the state instance variable to submit it. So this will be called both when we are calling the submit in at the first place, but also if we are uh, submitting but then we do something else then it will be even sourced uh, the same happens with you see the pattern is already the same expire raise when it's not possible to expire some some business logic and uh, accept order expired as an event it will be persisted it will be published and then it will be changing the state here so all order expired is uh, here we are just changing the state to expire so you see in the on on those handlers of this, the state changers, we have basically no logic. There are no if statements, they're just a building. Uh, well, there are some very basic if statements, but not really uh, for the business logic, they're just for building the internal state. Some implementations of the aggregate pattern actually assume that you can extract the state as a separate object. In a way, we have this uh, uh, together in here. Uh, the trick I was talking about or the, to, in order to understand um, the, the way aggregate root pattern works, first of all, you can go to the implementation of the aggregate root and you can see that the way apply works, it accepts an event, usually it's just one event, and then it uses, uses apply strategy because that's something you can override, so it's a bit more generic. And at the end, it, it passes the events to the collections or collection of, of unpublished events. And unpublished events will be um, called when we when we try to persist the aggregate. We will be uh, publishing all the unpublished events, and we will handle the versioning so that we are uh, the aggregate root takes care of you from uh, of the, um, the versioning strategy. So that's that's the way it works. Um, we also have a blog post. One simple trick to make even sourcing click. Which, in which Pavel explained the idea of even sourcing that like having two methods were probably still there, there was one. There I've said it. But that was basically the Greg's, uh, uh, Greg's approach to how aggregates can work. 
and we have examples and we have uh, the same explained in a just textual format uh, the public method corresponds to an action want to take on aggregate protects the business rules then tells what domain event happened if those rules were met and the private method which maps consequences of the domain that happened to the internal state representation so you have this example here also if you like you can see that even sourcing you can read this blog post again by pavel about how even sourcing is a transferable skill how this kind of code in ruby is basically almost the same as in haskell even though it's a it's a functional language actually the patterns stay the same so we can look at how this uh, uh, how this implementation looks looks in haskell too so i, th I think it's, it's worth reading we'll link to those two uh, blog posts in this to this video uh, this will take you some time to get used to this way of thinking because uh, probably at the beginning you kind of you may sometimes forget to call the apply methods or you will forget to actually add the private methods here it's interesting they are not marked as private in all cases here uh, but overall that, that's that, that's the pattern so you will um it's like it's best to practice that's why one of the homeworks will be about uh, implementing an aggregate because you try to implement very simple aggregates and just do it one by one you know implement three or five aggregates and you will learn this pattern this is something to learn and then it will get easier and easier the, the, you see the code base is overall simple and follows the same structure for each method uh, the rules are the same thanks <laughs>